Hey, this is Noah with The Creative Startup. Today we're going to talk about asking the right question. So to start us off, I'm going to just give you a little bit of an analogy to kind of help you think about what we're talking about today. So imagine you get lost in the woods, right? You're on a hiking trip, you take a wrong turn, and you're lost. It's getting a little bit chilly, the sun's starting to go down, and you realize, crap, if I stay in these woods overnight, if I can't get out of these woods, there's a good chance I'm going to die. You know, eventually, if you can't get out of the woods, you're going to die. You hear the wolves howling in the background, you know, there's bears out in the woods, and you're walking there, you're thinking... You know that you're going to die if you can't get out of here. But what if you walk around those woods, lost, and you start thinking, man, what what kind of cake should I have on my birthday this year? <laughs> should, you know, should I go with the Dairy Queen ice cream cake or should I go with the Sam's Club white cake? Oh, maybe where should I have my birthday party? You know, Should we do it at, at Baskin Robbins or should we move it over to Olive Garden? Right, you're asking yourself these questions that maybe do matter at some point in time. That maybe they did matter yesterday, and hopefully they'll matter tomorrow. But right now, you're lost in the woods, <laughs> and if you can't get out of the woods, it's over. Your, your birthday party won't exist. It's not gonna happen. You should, you'd be better off making plans for your funeral. See. This is something that sounds preposterous, but we do it all the time in life. We ask the wrong question. I, uh, I'm going to read a little bit of this article, and they talk about the same thing, asking the right questions. So, he says, 40 years ago, someone asked a profound question that fundamentally changed how we communicate with each other every day. So this is back when they still had dial-up telephones, you know, and they would have like party lines in, in certain areas even. So like you would call an entire area and then there would be different dial tones for different people you're trying to reach. It was, it was just crazy, the system, phone system at the time. And at the time, there was a young engineer named Marty at Motorola. He was given a new assignment. He was asked to lead a team project that showed great promise the next generation of a car radio telephone. Marty accepted, but the challenge, however, instead of jumping in, he accepted the challenge. However, instead of jumping in, he stepped back and paused, which led him to ask himself a very insightful question. Why is it that when we want to call and talk to a person, we have to call a place? I'm gonna repeat that. Why is it that when we want to stop and call a person, we have to call a place. That nagging, insightful question changed the entire trajectory of his work as he refocused his team's attention on untethering a person from a place, including a car. In 1973, Marty made his first phone call on a prototype. In 1973, Marty made his first cell phone call on a prototype of what would later become the Dynatac. 8000X, lovingly referred to as the brick. The guy who invented the cell phone. He was originally charged with making a car phone. And he says, you know, he could have gone along with convention, said, yeah, cool, let's just make the next car phone. Just like you might go along with convention and say, let's just do tomorrow a little better than I did today. You know, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to get a little bit more in shape. I'm going to go to work and make a little bit more money. I'm going to work on my art and get a little bit further. Right? And you can make incremental changes. I'm sure Marty here in this story would have made a great car telephone. But if we don't ask the crucial questions, we might end up making a product that is okay. Or we might end up with a life or a career that's okay instead of something that's revolutionary. And truly, truly better. I'm going to read a little more of this article. He said, The right question can be a disruptive agent, cutting through years of complacency to redirect a team and a company's focus. It serves as a pointer, aiming us in the direction of the answer. As Einstein put it, 
If I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on it, I would use the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. I love that. Because oftentimes our problems aren't that complicated. So I'm going to give you an example from my life. This YouTube channel, right? Right now I'm starting out. I've been doing it for a couple months now but I haven't had a ton of time to publicize it or anything. And so I, I could really focus on building a really good website. I could focus on having a great brand image. I could get a logo done. I could make it all streamlined and beautiful. And I've done that before. You know, I, I built a music store online that it actually works. Like I, I could go buy my own music on there and it's a beautiful site, fully functioning, amazing site. Nobody uses it. I built an incredible, beautiful blog. I don't want to like puff up my writing, but it was a beautiful looking blog. The graphics were great. I focused a ton of time and energy on just nitpicking the branding of it, making it really, really nice. But nobody reads it. And with this YouTube channel, I could again focus on making it a beautiful, beautiful brand and everything like that. But that would be the wrong thing to focus on. Because when I started this YouTube channel, I asked the question, okay, what is my problem? And I could say, well, I'm not getting followers, so I gotta build a better brand. You know, I'm not getting followers, I should make a website. I'm not getting followers, I should get an email list. But that's just like being in the lost in the woods and saying, what do I wanna have for my birthday cake? The question is irrelevant. Having a beautiful brand is irrelevant if no one's there to look at it. I instead need to be asking the question, how do I get people to see this in the first place? You know, and so that's why I've been focusing on more and just making good content, putting good stuff out there. And I'm going to be developing more strategies, but around right now, how do I get more people in? Because I could waste hours and hours and hours building a great brand and then nobody's going to see it. So I want to encourage you in your career and your creative work, don't focus on the, don't, don't get panicky when things don't work out and start asking the wrong questions, right? Because if no one buys your album and it's because the music sucks, that's an, it's an incredibly different problem than if someone doesn't buy your album because it wasn't publicized well. Same problem, but a different solution, right? Same problem, different solution. So you have to identify what is the actual issue and what is the best thing I can focus my time on. I did a previous video about investing your time, seeing your time as an investment. I'm going to link that down below because I, I think that relates to this. That, that one was a little bit more about efficiency. But this one is just a little more broad, stepping back and saying, what is it? that's gonna actually make change. Not incremental, not small, but what is the most important question I should get after? I'm also gonna link down below to a Tim Ferriss episode. Uh, he's a great podcaster and author, if you don't know who Tim Ferriss is. But he interviews Josh Waitskin, who's a chess prodigy and just a brilliant investor. And he's been a, he, he, I think he was a MMA, not MMA, he was like a, Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter or something like that just a brilliant guy and he talks about how he learned all these things by saying what is that one problem I hope that makes sense I hope that's helpful for you guys um, if you guys enjoy this click subscribe I got other videos made and I got other videos coming I'm hoping to do some interviews here soon yeah hope you guys enjoy again I'm Noah Hoffman with the creative startup